further behind. <laughs> I'm afraid he'll overwork again. Of course. <laughs> well, come along, Paul. We won't be long. That was luck. I didn't think he'd let me go. He couldn't very well refuse. I saw Armstrong. He's having the prints checked. And Paul, while I was at the city hall, I saw your mother and Curtis go into the marriage license bureau. But, Doc, she promised me. I know how you feel. It hasn't been easy for me to accept this situation either. Maybe you won't have to. What do you mean? There's an abandoned farm building near here, exactly like in my dream. I saw it from the roof. Paul, one ramshackle old building looks much like another. Maybe. But something very strange happened on that roof this afternoon. I had a feeling that Neil Bach was going to shove me off when you drove up. Are you sure you're not just imagining these things, Paul? Sure, I'm sure. And I'll tell you something else, too. Curtis drove himself up here last night. Curtis driving? That's strange. He told me he couldn't drive. I know. That's why I got the license number. I thought maybe you could find out who owns the car. Take it right over to his office. You'd better. I'll have to go back or Mulebach will get suspicious. You'd better stop here, Doc. I'll walk the rest of the way. No use taking any chances with that evidence. I don't like to see you go back in there feeling the way you do about that place. Oh, I'll be all right. I've got to go in and stall for time. If things get too hot, I'll, I'll phone Lydia and say I'm lonesome. That'll mean get here quick. All right, Paul, but take it easy. I'd better go home and clean up a bit, then I'll go right over to Armstrong. So long, Doc. Darling, don't be angry. Surely one day doesn't make that much difference. I promised Dr. Stone he could marry us. You wouldn't want me to hurt his feelings, would you? Well, why can't we go over there now? Why wait? We can spend tonight and tomorrow at the lake and then go on to Washington. After all, I must think of that contract, Virginia. Even a man in love has to think of business. All right. I'll call Dr. Stone, see if he can't find some time free. He ought to be able to work us in somewhere. A ceremony doesn't take long. Do you want me to call him? No, I'll do it. She just came looking for Dorothy. 
Uh, what did uh, Dr. Stone say? Dr. Stone? Oh, yes. He was busy all day today in the evening. But I made an appointment for noon tomorrow. Oh, good. Now, where shall we go to celebrate? Why not go to that little inn where we first had dinner together? Brett, I'd rather not go out tonight. I've got packing to do and a few letters to write. I'll just have dinner on a tray in my room with Dorothy. And tell her the news. She goes back to school on Monday. And I won't have another chance to see her. I hope I may look forward to your exclusive attention on our honeymoon, Mrs. Curtis. Well, you shouldn't call me that, not yet. <laughs> it's very unlucky, you know. <laughs> with all the luck I have, I can afford to be reckless. On you later, darling. disconnecting the phone when I'm trying to get a call through. I want you to be absolutely quiet. You are agitated. I was afraid your outing today would be too much for you. I'm getting out of this place, but quick. Not in your present condition, my boy. You are hysterical. I couldn't possibly allow you to leave in such a state. Allow me? You don't think you can keep me here if I want to go, do you? I'm afraid that may be necessary. You seem to be forgetting that I'm a guest. All my patients are guests. Sit down, my dear boy, and calm yourself. Tell me, uh, what has upset you? Was it something you found at that farm where you went this afternoon? You followed us. I observed you from the roof with the binoculars. All right, since you know so much. We found the truck that killed my father. The police ought to have the evidence by now, and I know you and Curtis were mixed up in it. Again, you were having hallucinations. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hello, Professor. Where have you been? I've been trying to reach you for the past hour. Well, I went to the station for tickets. We're being married tomorrow noon. That's impossible now. I'll explain when I see you. We've been half an hour at the east end of the golf course. I'll be there. I don't like to exaggerate Paul's danger, Mr. Armstrong, but that place up there gives me the creeps. I'm uneasy about the boy. Why does everything take so long? The machinery of the law, Doctor. It's much better than it used to be. Armstrong? Barbara? 
Cargill and the Curtis is registered under the name of Charlotte Farber. Does that name mean anything to you, Doctor? Why, yes. She's Moobach's secretary, yeah? Put a blanket out for it. Get going. Chief, the California Motor Vehicles has a thumbprint on Brett Curtis. It matches the print taken from the body in the mine identified as Barrington. That means Curtis was killed in the mine, not Barrington. Paul was right. And Barrington is just cunning enough to pull something like that, too. Then it isn't unlikely that Curtis... Could be Barrington. Well, Chief, we got what's left of the truck, buried under a ton of hay. Any fingerprints? Yep, in the tool compartment. Compare those. They match all right. They match the Curtis prints Paul got from the water glass. Well, are you satisfied? Go to the country club. Pick up Brett Curtis. Suspicion of murder. Cartwright case. Right, okay. We've got to get to that boy, Armstrong. Wubach and Curtis are working together, and there's no telling what may have happened to him by this time. I mean, the Milbach place said Middleburg. Now, don't worry, Doctor. We'll find out in a few minutes. Tell me about tomorrow. Oh, Brett, I'm so thrilled. Mother's going to let me be a bridesmaid. Isn't that wonderful? I thought we might drive down to the florist and get dozens of roses and take them to the cottage. I want to do something special, and I'm sure the princess would love it. That's a charming idea, Dorothy. I should have thought of that myself. Well, then, let's go. Now, just a moment. I was going to meet somebody here. But I'll, um, I'll leave a note for him. But don't be long. So that's strange. Come on, Doctor. My car is downstairs. Him alive. Of course he's alive. He's in his room. Which room? The first one down the hall, but it's locked. Have you a key? No, Professor Muehlbach has a key. He's out for the evening. Slade, take this woman in custody. Hold her as a material witness. Come on, Langdon. Mrs. Cartwright's marrying that Duke Curtis the first thing tomorrow. How do you know? Uh -huh. 
Well, all I saw Dorothy and Curtis come out of the forest with a big box and they drove off in her car. Mike Peppers told me they were going up to decorate the cottage on account of Mrs. Cardwright. Which... Curtis and Dorothy have gone up to the cottage alone? Yes. Yeah. Listen, Paul. Uh, just a minute, Doc. Curtis and Dorothy have gone up to the cottage together alone. What? Doc, uh, my sister and Curtis went up to Lakewood. She's alone with them. A mule bark knows the police are happening. Anything can happen. We're getting out there. So long. Come on, where's the car? Outside. Lydia, you better stay here. Me, I'm coming with you. Well, why doesn't somebody tell me something? <laughs> under arrest. This is an outrage. You must be mistaking me for someone else. Come along. Yes. Yeah. Well, the princess will arrange them all over again. She can make flowers look as if they just grew out of a vase. Well, we better be starting back, Brad. What about a ride in the lunch? It's perfect out on the lake. There are a million stars floating on the water, and the crescent moon looks like something out of Omar Khayyam. <laughs> Fred, you are the most romantic person. Most men around here never even heard of Omar Khayyam. If they did, they think he's a Turkish wrestler or something. Mother's really lucky. I'm glad you think so. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you're very lovely in the moonlight. Oh, well, everybody is, but I adore compliments. The best I ever got from George was, oh, come on, you look all right. You know, Brett, I've grown out of that crowd. I don't know what I ever saw in them. I'm really quite poetic at heart. Only it's positively lethal to let anybody know about it in our crowd. They simply jeer. I heard a car, didn't you? Probably out on the main highway. Come on. Oh, oh my, I'm so tight. Oh, I'm sorry. Steps are so uneven, I was afraid you might fall. Really, Brett, I think we'd better not. I must be getting back. Mother will be worried. Where's your spirit of adventure? I thought you were romantic. All right. But we won't stay long. Thank you. 